Mr. DVB here, so today I'm going to be bringing you guys my review of Bumblebee, which is the newest film in the Transformers franchise, set before all of the other films. So this movie is solely focused on Bumblebee and his journey to Earth after the fall of Cybertron, as he befriends a young girl named Charlie, played by Haley Steinfeld. So this is a movie that I've been looking forward to since day one. It's being directed by Travis Knight, who made Kubo and the Two Strings, a film that I have never seen, but it does have fantastic reviews, and because of that, I actually had a lot of hope for this movie since the previous films were all directed by Michael Bay, and those films are just critically panned for being really overbloated, and that's exactly how I felt about those movies. So I thought with a new director being brought on board, it could be better. And just in general, the trailers got me more excited for this than any of the other Transformers movies because it actually looked like it had a story to tell, and it wasn't just some big explosion fest. So I was overall excited for this film, and it really delivered on a lot of aspects. I still don't think this is a perfect movie. I do think it has some flaws. There's lots of room for development and things that they could definitely fix in the sequels, but overall, I do think this was a really, really well-made movie, and definitely the best live-action Transformers film we've had to date. So to start off with the pros, I have to talk about Haley Steinfeld as Charlie. I really liked this character. I think Samwit Wiki and the other protagonists in the series are fine. I wouldn't call them awful or anything, but they're certainly not as good as she was. I think that Haley Steinfeld had a lot of development in this movie. They had this whole backstory with her and her father that I actually kind of cared for. I did feel kind of an emotional connection in that sense. I wasn't that sounds dumb, but it's true, I did actually kind of care for her character in a way, and seeing her relationship with Bumblebee build over the film was something I actually enjoyed to watch, because there was an emotional connection between those two characters, so that's something that I really liked in this film. I also thought all the other characters were really likable as well, there's this one character who kind of plays a boyfriend in a sense, and he was likable, he was pretty funny, and he didn't feel like forced or annoying or anything, so I did like that, and overall, the characters in this movie were just fun. Now, if I do have to talk about cons, I would say the biggest problem with this movie for me was any of the scenes that didn't have to deal with Bumblebee and Haley Steinfeld's character's relationship. All those scenes were absolutely fantastic. I loved the relationship. Seeing it build over the film was great because, like I said, I really cared for these characters and it just had this really fun vibe. I digged the soundtrack to this movie. It had a really good soundtrack with lots of great 80s songs. So anything that had to do with those two characters, I just loved. It was really fun. Seeing them get chased by police officers was really hilarious and overall, all their moments were excellent. But anything that wasn't that, anything that was focused on the Decepticons and them trying to find Bumblebee was just kind of very underwhelming. I didn't like those scenes at all. They felt kind of forced and honestly the writing in those scenes were definitely much weaker than the writing in the rest of the film. Um, and the Decepticon and villains in this film in general were just really underdeveloped and not very interesting as villains. They were kind of just characters that are thrown in and they want to find Bumblebee, I guess. I don't know. I really didn't like that part of the movie. I think the second half is definitely weaker than the first half because the first half, like I said, was focused on this character and her relationship. Whereas the second half is just all about, oh yeah, the Decepticons want to, you know, like, destroy the rest of the Autobots and whatever. It just, it was stuff we've all seen before, but it was actually handled in a really weak way, so I didn't enjoy those parts of the movies. But I would say everything else in this film was great. I really liked the visual effects. They looked really awesome. And this film's budget was, I think, 110 million, so cheaper than the other Transformers movies, and I would definitely say that this is the best looking of all of them. It just had a really nice look to it. Uh, the Transformers were using the original G1 designs from like the 80s cartoons and toys, so they actually looked awesome in this movie. I do like the designs of the Transformers in the regular films, but this just definitely has a much more interesting look, and it was really awesome to see that finally being put into a film. Also, all the Cybertron scenes were really awesome in this movie. They weren't that many in the film, but when they were there, they were pretty cool to watch because the action was really well handled, and overall, the action action sequences in this movie in general were really well done. They weren't just filled with a ton of explosions like the previous Transformers movies. They were really close up, there was lots of really cool wide shots that we would get, and overall they were just directed very well by Travis Knight, and overall I think that this is a director they definitely need to stick with for the future of the Transformers franchise because he did a really good job with this movie. And like I said earlier, the characters in this movie were all likable. I really enjoyed Haley Steinfeld. I think the kind of interest, uh, love interest character was good as well. John Cena in this film plays John Cena in this film. He's a pretty comedic character. He was definitely written um, much worse than all the other characters in the sense that his dialogue's pretty corny and cheesy, but that was all purposeful. You can definitely tell when watching that, so it was a little bit cheesy and corny sometimes, but like I said, it was all done for a reason, and I think it worked quite well. So overall, guys, I really enjoyed Bumblebee. I just think that second half and anything that was focused on the Decepticons were quite a bit weaker than the rest of the film, but overall, I'm going to give this movie a 7.5 out of 10. <laughs>
definitely a huge step up from the previous Transformers movies, and a film that I will probably pick up on Blu-ray. So there you go, guys. Those are my thoughts on Bumblebee. I hope to see you guys next time, where I'll be reviewing Mary Poppins Returns. Thank you all for watching this video, and bye.